Welcome again everyone. Now I will discuss about neonatal herpes simplex infection. Neonatal herpes is uncommon but potentially fatal infection of the fetus or more likely the newborn. The estimated rate of neonatal herpes is 1 per 3000 to 5000 live births. And more than 90% of neonatal herpes cases are the result of maternal to child transmission. When we see the mechanism of transmission, the risk for transmission is greatest during a primary or non-primary first infection, and much lower when the exposure is during the recurrent infection. So when it is primary and non-primary first infection, the chance of transmission is 30 to 50%, and when the herpes infection of the mother is during recurrent infection, the chance of transmission from the mother to newborn is less than 2%. Herpes simplex viral suppression therapy in mothers does not consistently eliminate the possibility of neonatal infection. Infants born to mothers dual infected with HIV and herpes simplex virus 2 are also at high risk for acquiring HIV than infants born to HIV positive mothers who are not herpes simplex virus 2 infected. So the chance of transmitting HIV from the mother to newborn increases if the newborn is affected by herpes simplex virus 2. It is estimated that approximately 25 of pregnant women are herpes simplex virus 2 infected and that approximately 2% of pregnant women acquire herpes simplex virus 2 infection during pregnancy. Herpes simplex virus infection can be acquired in utero during the birth process or during the neonatal period. Most cases of neonatal herpes results from maternal infection and the transmission, usually during passage through an infected birth canal of a mother with asymptomatic genital herpes. If it is symptomatic genital herpes, most of the time obstetrian chance do CGR section rather than vaginal delivery to prevent the chance of transmission from the mother to the newborn. So majority of transmission is during the birth process and the majority of the mothers are asymptomatic genital herpes. Fewer than 30% of mothers of an infant with neonatal herpes have a history of genital herpes. So majority of them doesn't remember the symptoms and the signs of uh, genital herpes. Regarding the clinical manifestation of neonatal herpes infection, neonatal herpes simplex virus infection is thought to be uh, always symptomatic. They never be asymptomatic. It is clinical presentation reflects timing of infection, portal of injury, and extent of spread. Infants with intrauterine infection typically have skin vesicles or scarring, eye findings including chorioretinites, keratoconjunctivites, and the microcephaly or hyrencephaly that present at delivery. Few, few infants survive without therapy and those who do generally have severe sequelae. Infants infected during delivery or the postpartum period present with one of the following three patterns of disease. This is localized to skin, eye, or mouth and encephalitis and disseminatory infection. Approximately 20% present between 5 and 9 weeks of age. The first one is skin, eye and the mouse. Infants with skin, eye and the mouse generally present at 5 to 11 days of life, typically demonstrate a few small vesicles, particularly on the presenting part or at the site of trauma such as at the sites of scalp electrode or as a site of placement of the forceps or vacuum delivery. If untreated, skin, eye and the mouse disease in infants may progress to encephalitis or disseminated disease. So as you see on this image, there is skin, eye and the mouse infection by herpes simplex virus type 2 of the neonate. The second one is herpes encephalitis. Infants with encephalitis typically present at 8 to 17 days of life with clinical findings suggestive of bacterial meningitis, including irritability, lethargy, poor feeding, poor tone, and a seizure. Fever is relatively uncommon, and the skin vesicles occur in approximately 60% of cases. If untreated, 50% of infants with herpes simplex virus encephalitis die, and the most survivors have severe neurologic sequelae. The third one is disseminated herpes simplex virus infection. Infants with disseminated herpes simplex virus infection generally become ill at 5 to 11 days of life. And their clinical picture is similar to that of infants with bacterial sepsis consisting of 
temperature abnormality such as hyperthermia or hypothermia irritability poor feeding and vomiting and they may also exhibit respiratory distress cyanosis apneic spell jaundice skin rash uh, other evidence of cns infection such as seizure skin vesicles are seen in approximately 75 percent of cases of disseminated herpes simplex virus infection during the neonatal period if untreated the infection causes shock and the disseminated intravascular coagulation and approximately 90% of these infants die and the most survivors have severe neurologic sequelae. So this one is the worst form of neonatal herpes infection, the disseminated one. When we see about evaluation of neonatal herpes infection, evaluation of a neonate with suspected herpes simplex virus infection should include culture of suspicious lesion as well as eye and the mouse swabs and the PCR of both CSF and the blade. In neonates, testing for elevation of liver enzymes might provide indirect evidence of herpes simplex virus dissemination to visceral organs. And in the case of neonatal herpes encephalitis, CSF and EEG should be done. And on CSF, initial monocytosis or lymphocytosis and elevated CSF protein and the depressed CSF glucose is 100% present. And EEG was abnormal in 10% of patients and it shows mainly abnormality around the temporal area. Regarding treatment, all infants with proven or suspected neonatal herpes simplex virus infection should be treated immediately with high-dose intravenous acyclovir, 60 mg per kg per day, divided every 8 hours. And the treatment might be discontinued in infants shown by laboratory testing not to be infected. And infants with herpes simplex virus disease limited to skin, eye and the mouth should be treated for 40 days, whereas those with disseminated and encephalitis should receive 21 days of therapy. Patients receiving high-dose therapy should be monitored for neutropenia. Suppressive OLAR acyclovir therapy for six months after completion of the intravenous therapy has shown to improve the neurodevelopment of infants with CNS infection and to prevent cutaneous recurrences in infants regardless of disease pattern. Infants should receive 300 mg per meter square per dose three times daily for six months and the absolute neutrophil count should be measured at two weeks and at four weeks after initiation of treatment and then monthly this is all about neonatal herpes infection thank you for watching